So, um, welcome uh, people at home. This is our last day of new content before the seniors leave. And there is a, uh, there is a theorem. And the theorem is, okay, well, first of all, I should be careful. Probably I should use the book uh, in order to be careful. But obviously not every graph is five colorable. Uh, what kinds of graphs are we interested in? Plain and simple. Yeah. So theorem, uh, theorem, if G is a planar connected uh, simple graph, um, uh, then uh, chi, uh, which is the, it's not a good chi, is. Um, <laughs> Then chi is um, less than or equal to four. Uh, this is another way of saying every uh, connected planar simple graph is four colorable. Okay, this proof is hard. It is famously hard. It requires like extreme casework and has been done like by computers um, only. Uh, there's no simple intuitive proof of it. So while this is true, um, we're not going to prove this. What we are going to prove is that chi is less than or equal to five. So five vertices are five colors are sufficient to color any plain or simple connected graph. All right, and this um, theorem has like a whole bunch of lemmas associated with it. So let's first handle those. Would you like a? We are going to make a crucial use of um, the fact uh, of this theorem that we proved. Uh, for homework. Should we just like redo it really quick? Yeah. It only takes like three minutes. What's that? Okay. So, um, uh, so, okay. So, like, let's just call this like lemma number one. Uh, lemma number one is uh, that uh, epsilon is less than or equal to 3n minus 6 um, for a, a planar connected a uh, simple uh, graph with n vertices. Graph with n vertices um, and epsilon edges. Wait, this is the class where I actually did this entire group and then did it like again, right? So I think great. N is greater than equal to three. No. No. Less than. Right? Because this says you can't have two edges. Yeah, this says you can't have too many edges, right? If your graph has n vertices, then you can't have too many edges. Because if you have too many edges, it won't be planar anymore. So if it is planar, this is like an upper bound on the number of edges that are possible. Yeah, he's right. No, n has to be n has to be like greater than or equal to three. Oh, for n greater than or equal to three. Yeah, true. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. If n is greater than or equal to three, then this then the theorem uh, is that there can't be too many edges uh, as a function of n. Okay. Do we maybe need to do we need to reprove this? Maybe we don't need to reprove this. Tyler says no. Uh, I can do it. No, 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 let's just do it. It just takes two minutes. So here we go. How did we do it? We said, um, we said, well, if it's plain or simple and connected, then uh, any region um, of the graph has to have a at least can have at minimum uh, uh, three uh, bounding edges, and so the minimum uh, degree of any of any region uh, is um, is three. Which is another way of saying that the degree of any region is um, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to uh, three. And if the degree of a particular region is greater than or equal to three, then the sums of the degrees of all the regions has to be greater than or equal to three times the number of regions, which we call rho. Following this? Going fast. This is our third time doing it, so you should follow it. Oh, so what can I say about going through all the regions and counting all their um, edges? If I take the sums of the degrees of all of the regions, well then I have counted every edge of every region. But since every edge borders two regions, I've double counted every edge. So this is actually two times the number of edges. So if that's true, then I know that two times the number of edges is greater than or equal to three rho. And so we get this little rho is less than or equal to two thirds epsilon fact. And since uh, the number of vertices minus the number of edges plus the number of regions is two, uh, then the number of regions is uh, two minus n plus epsilon. 
and if the number of regions is less than or equal to two-thirds epsilon, then two minus n plus epsilon is less than or equal to two-thirds epsilon. And so like math happens. What am I trying to do? Sorry. Yeah, so a third epsilon is less than or equal to uh, n minus two, and so epsilon is less than three and minus six. Do you know where epsilon's back? Probably did, like right here. Whew. Okay, so this uh, comes uh, from our ability to partition the graph into regions, which assumes implicitly that the graph is planar. Okay, so good. All right, that was like lemma number one, which was the homework problem. Well, uh, lemma number two, uh, in order to prove that every graph is five colorable, is just that, look, um, if you don't have too many edges, then there has to be a vertex somewhere with not too many edges adjacent to it. So lemma two says um, that. Uh, so if G is uh, planar, uh, simple, connected, then. Uh, there is a vertex of degree less than or equal to 5. Um, then uh, G has a vertex, uh, let's call it vertex W, uh, where the degree of W is less than or equal to 5. All right, can we discuss why this is like sort of intuitively true? Actually, maybe, maybe we just do the proof. Yeah. Wait, wait, if you if it wasn't true, then you'd have like a complete graph somewhere. Yeah, you'd be at K5. What? You have K5. No. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, kind of. So Maybe we just do like, it. Not actually, because like, the proof's like one line. I just it's like not true at all. I just remember. Um, so, okay, so if G is a planar simple connected graph, then G must have a vertex with small degree, and small is less than or equal to 5. All right, well, um, suppose not. So, suppose not. Um, if it's not true that there is a degree, that there is a vertex with a degree less than or equal to 5, then what? Every degree. Every degree. Yeah, then every vertex uh, has a degree uh, greater than or equal to um, 6. Okay, well that just can't be. Because if every vertex has degree greater than or equal to 6, 6 then what is the sum? Um, is this what I want to do? Then I take the sum of the yeah. Then I take the sum of the degrees of all the vertices, and if I take the sum of the degrees of all the vertices, uh, what do I get? Greater than or equal to six n. It has to be greater than or equal to six n, right? Yeah. Because if every vertex has a degree greater than or equal to six, but then also Can I use this? sure. But then also of course. Um, the sums of the degrees of the vertices is equal to twice the number of edges, right? Oh, uh, because just that's just handshake again. So now this says that um, that uh, yeah. So like two epsilon is greater than or equal to six n, or in other words, uh, epsilon is greater than or equal to three n. But just like no, man, that can't be because what have we just seen? that epsilon is bounded by 3n minus 6. So by lemma 1, if this were true, then I would have 3n is less than or equal to epsilon, which is less than or equal to 3n minus 6. And that, that's, like, that's like bad. Yeah. Got it? OK. So all right, good. So what this tells me is that in any simple connected planar graph, there's always one guy with, at most, Five friends. Okay? So there might be some people with like a lot of friends, but someone at least has um, you know only five friends. Okay, or less. That's pretty Or less. Okay. <laughs> we switch we switch to the other first of all, all you really need in life is like two friends. After after that it's just like a waste of time. All right. Uh, can you pick up the camera and move it like uh, over here like behind Tyler if we get a good angle? Woo! All right. We are ready to begin. We have to consider every conceivable uh, planar simple connected graph. And so um, let's uh, do it by induction. 
Wait, but that light doesn't extend to infinite graphs. What's up? That doesn't extend to infinite graphs. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> Good. Good. Discrete math. We're not talking about infinite. Well, I don't know. Okay. Uh, I don't know anything about infinite graphs. That's not even an exaggeration. I know nothing about them. All right. Good. Um, we proceed. Um, no, wait, no, 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 Jackson, we're making a video not talking about infinite graphs. Good. All right. Um, so, uh, base case. Mm -hmm. um, we're, gonna, we're going to induct on the number of vertices. So, base case, uh, suppose um, G has uh, less than or equal to 5 um, has n less than or equal to five vertices. Okay, well, you're supposed to say duh, because if a graph has five vertices only, then clearly it is five colorable. Yeah, duh. Just give every vertex its own color. Agree? Yeah. Yeah, so, okay. So, assign a color uh, to each. Um, a vertex. Uh, so, uh, chi uh, is clearly less than or equal to 5. Remember, chi is the minimum number of colors required to color every vertex, to color all the, vert to all, color all the vertices such a way that no two adjacent vertices have the same color. Okay, good. So now, um, we will do our inductive hypothesis. So our inductive hypothesis is we're going to use strong induction here, that all uh, graphs uh, G with N vertices um, are five colorable. Which is another way of saying that chi is less than or equal to five. Okay, so good. And what do I need to show? Oh, okay, that's cool. Oh, he's done already in his head? Cool. So, yeah, so uh, what I now need to do is let, uh, let G uh, be a um, graph um, with uh, N plus 1 vertices, uh, and I must uh, show it is, uh, it ha it is 5 colors. Colorable. Okay, so um, so good. Uh, so I now have my arbitrary. Can I stop saying simple planar connected every single time? So simple planar connected graph G with n plus one vertices. I must show that it's is five colorable. Okay. Well, I um, immediately begin with my lemma two which says that there's always somewhere, like let's just focus on the vertex with the least number of friends. And let's see if we can work our way around that, right? So, okay, by uh, lemma two, um, uh, there is a vertex, there is a vertex, uh, call, it, uh, call it V uh, of G, uh, uh, where the degree of V is less than or equal to 5. All right, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a new graph, um, uh, G prime, which is like the subgraph by taking out V, right? So let uh, G prime be the graph G but minus this one uh, vertex with degree less than or equal to 5. What can I say about G prime? It also has a least. Well, yeah, that's true, but even simpler? <coughs> by the, it has n vertices by the inductive hypothesis. Um, I, sorry, I need to amend this to less than or equal to n vertices. So I want all graphs to be colorable. With less, I, I did say strong induction, but I really need to do this. But at the moment, uh, I'm saying if G prime is the new graph where we just take out this vertex of degree less than or equal to 5, um, by my inductive hypothesis, uh, G prime has n vertices, um, n vertices 
So the chi of g prime is indeed less than or equal to 5. Okay, so keeping that in mind, we now go through a whole bunch of cases. All right, so case, suppose that the degree of v is um, actually strictly less than 5. Then you're just like done, right? Yeah, Gossip rambles for a whole paragraph and I don't understand a single thing he's saying. I read it five times. But I claim, unless someone sees the subtlety that I'm missing, I claim then then this is just like dumb, right? Because here's here is V, uh, say. Uh, v the degree of V was actually was actually less than five. So what that means is that it has only four neighbors. So let these be let these vertices be colored however, and it doesn't matter because what's up, Dylan? Well you're not guaranteed it's connected anymore. But like that doesn't matter. Because connected is actually uh, now I understand Gossip's rambling paragraph. <laughs> like, where to connect it though? Okay, good. Wait, what? Wait, you've never like actually used this connected, have we? Oh we have. Uh, I mean, like, um <laughs> Wait, okay, okay, but I'm, I'm okay now. I'm okay. I think I think the connectedness was, um, I don't know where I used the connectedness. It's a good question. Um, okay, wait, I now, okay, so now I'm back. Thank you, Dilhan. So that's right, so what Dilhan's saying is, if you remove vertex V, it's possible that your graph becomes disconnected, and so it's possible that these vertices are in separate components, but then it's just like even easier to do, right? Yeah, so essentially, um, imagine that the vertices that are adjacent to V are, well, basically the key point is that any, um, okay, if the graph is, I'll just say it like this, if the graph is still connected, um, when you remove V, then by the inductive hypothesis, um, the, the graph uh, G prime um, uh, can, be, can be colored with with just five colors. So whatever the previous five coloring of this graph was, then it really doesn't matter because all that we need to do to make the G graph a correct five color is to give a, pro is to give a color to V. And literally you can just let V be whatever the fifth color is that you haven't used yet. Um, okay. If, on the other hand, the removal of V breaks uh, G prime up into disconnected components. Well, then each of those components is a connected planar symbol graph. So you apply the inductive hypothesis on those components, and you get that they're also each five colorable. But then again, V only has four uh, vertices adjacent with it, so at most four colors are being used. And so I just let V be the fifth color, and now it's back again. Cool. Okay. So either way, Grace. I was just. Good. All right. So done. All right, so that case was kind of like a little bit silly. All right, so where does it get hard? It gets hard if the degree of V is equal to 5, right? Is that right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Case, um, the degree of V actually is 5. So now V has 5 friends. Um, and so I don't have a color free to just assign to, to V, right? Oh, you might have one. I might. I don't, have, I don't obviously have a free friend, color to assign to um, So, uh, okay, well, right. So one, one other sort of trivial case is, so um, within this case is the case where um, the chi of G prime is actually uh, less than five. In other words, um, the picture looks exactly like above, um, except um, now V, so it doesn't look like the one above at all, uh, because V has five friends, but, um, but those, but that entire graph G prime, the graph of G but without vertex V, can be colored with just four colors. That's what this, or less, right? So I, I'm, I'm showing the four case. But if I can do if I can do the entire uh, if I can do the entire uh, G prime graph with four colors or fewer, then like I've done everything. I still have a whole color like spare in my pocket. So I just assign V that fifth color, 
Is this okay? Yeah. 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 Cool? yeah, then I just assign V that fifth color, right? If, the, if I could, this tie of G prime is saying, if I can, okay, I think we're good. No one's saying yes, we're good, but. Yes, yes we're good. Good, all right. So, really, this entire proof, the only, like, the only part of this proof that requires actual like, effort and stuff, is if the degree of V is 5 and chi of G prime is 5. Right? In other words, five colors are required to color the subgraph G prime and also the vertex with uh, that's guaranteed to have degree less than or equal to 5 actually has degree 5. This is like the hard case. Can I get some bigger head nods? of like, yeah, this is the case that's hard. Okay, woo! Make sure the camera is rotating properly to keep up with me and my high-powered lecture. <laughs> woo! All right, we do it. This is a brilliant and a gorgeous proof. You will never forget your whole life. Um, so here's me. Forget some test day. PS5. Five friends. <laughs> Let's call the five friends of B, B1, B2, B3, B4, B5. Okay, so this is B, B1, B2, B3, B4, and B5. Okay, and um, here's the thing. Uh, I have to assume that these five uh, vertices are all colored differently. Do I have to mention that? I think I actually have to mention that. Because it's not, um, well yeah, okay. So right, so if it just so happens that the five vertices, it might be the case, there's even actually like a further case, which I'm gonna gloss over, which is that though the graph G prime might require five colors, it might be the case that the five vertices which are adjacent to V only require four colors, right? But you don't actually need this case, because it's just like part of that case, basically. No, it's not. It's that case. It's, it's a slightly case. different, because like, now I'm assuming it's, that... It's, like, you don't care about if it's five exactly. You care about, like, if the, four, if the five... Yes, is I could have structured this maybe a little bit differently. But yeah, if... But I think I think Zardin's right, but nonetheless, being slightly analogous, if four, fewer than... If there are fewer than four colors, if the coloration of G prime uh, is such that the five neighbors of V require only four colors, then of course there's one available. So let's assume the worst case. The worst case is that um, the five colors uh, of, um, and I'll color this like not colored yet, because we don't know what color it needs to be, uh, that the five neighbors of, um, uh, G, uh, of V are in their, um, uh, in their coloration which must exist in the five coloring which must exist by the inductive hypothesis, they are assigned five different colors. And what I must do is extend this five coloring in G prime to a coloring in G. Cool? Okay. So, what should we do? Well, here is where it gets awesome. Um, so. Yep. Okay. So, start at V1 and... Uh, so go to V1, right? And now begin a walk, uh, sort of a walk. And let this walk keep going, um, alternating red and green. Okay, so V1 may have many vertices adjacent to it, right? And it's possible that none of them are red, are colored red in the G prime uh, five color. Okay? If none of the vertices of V1 are colored, if none of the um, vertices which are adjacent to V1 are colored red, stop. Okay? But if there is a vertex uh, adjacent to V1 which is colored red, then take your walk there. All right? Uh, now, once you get to this red vertex, uh, look at all the vertices which are adjacent to this uh, red vertex. And um, there may be many of them. If some of them are colored uh, green, then uh, take the walk that way. And basically continue following a sort of, I don't know the proper way to say this, but like just basically just like go through um, taking a walk as far as you can possibly go following red, green, alternating uh, vertices. Okay, the coloration already exists, so we're not doing a coloring. We're just following a walk through the colored vertices. So 
Um, and then do it like in a depth first type way. Like go as far as you can and then go back and like, because there could be multiple ones. Oh, you, do, right? Right? you just go until you find a place where you stop. Right, but then go back and add them all too. No? It doesn't matter, I think. Right? Just go in. Wait. Oh. Go all the way out. Because if you stop somewhere, I want to follow all possible paths. Okay. So it is, it is depth. I think I'm using the term depth first correctly, yeah, yeah. right? Like, but actually, I think it's like irrelevant. It's but it's actually irrelevant if you yeah, depth first or not. Just every time, just yeah. keep going until all the path, until all the walks like terminate. Because, like I was saying, there might be multiple green vertices adjacent to red vertices. And anyway, this is going to continue out. Many possible things are going to happen following this. Uh, kind of red green walk um, as long as one wishes until you can't go any any further. All right, what's one thing that might happen? Oh, and because you can't have like a you time. hit. Wait, wait, wait. One thing that might happen is that you hit V three. In fact, you're just gonna either hit V three or you're not. Right. That's why I think, Don, I need to go out like as far as possible. Yeah, yeah. Because the, the, the two cases, the two cases are, does, does following as far out as one can possibly go in all directions, all, wait, let me just finish my sentence. Does going all the way out as far as you can go in all directions, alternating red-green vertices, does that walk eventually include V3 or does it eventually not include V3? Okay. So, does everyone see how one of those two has to be the case? Yeah. Johan, yes. Wait, just like you have cardiac hydrogen two green vertices. What have I done? Yeah, like if it's on edge. What's on edge? It's like space. <laughs> I was just mentioning that all of these vertices have many edges, right? Yeah. But it's only if that if only if that next vertex is yeah. red do I keep going. Better. <laughs> okay. Do you want me to like make it blue or something just for clarity? <laughs> Alright, good. Alright, so let's so those are these are the two cases to consider. One, um, do we ever hit V3 or not? Okay, first let's do can I just talk this whole thing out because it's like so clear. Um, so suppose we never hit V3. Right? So following all possible alternating red green uh, uh, vertex walks through the coloration that already existed in G prime. We never got caught back up with V3 again. Okay, then does it, is it clear what we can now do? Yeah. Yeah. Swap, right? That what I can now do, therefore, is swap all these colors. And so I replace every, I don't want to actually do it. Can I just talk yeah. about doing it? Replace this green with the red, replace this red with the green, etc., and swap all these colors. And now, no, I want to do it. It's pretty. And now, uh, wait, like in, your walk, but in my walk, not every, not in the entire graph, in this walk. Yeah. So what was this? This was green, right? Yeah. So we make it red, and then we make this one green, and we make this one green, and we make this one red. But this is not going to, this is not going to conflict with our previous uh, coloration in G prime because every other vertex on this walk, because we've now we've now swapped every we've swapped every red and green. So there may be black, purple, and blue vertices out there, but we do we do not break the, the coloration scheme because we've only swapped the red and green. And it doesn't bump back in with anything that's going on over here. So and now of course we've freed up a whole color, right? So we color V green. Okay, it's like, it's like brilliant. Okay, now, so now the other case, um, uh, what was this? This was green? Yeah. My dots are going to get larger and larger. This is red, <laughs> this is green, uh, this was red, and then I guess, what did we say? That was like a green one here or whatever, right? Yeah. And then, okay, so, so imagine that it does uh, connect back up with V3. Okay, so then I don't have that option is not available to me, right? Because now there's like a closed walk uh, through through V1 and V3. Aha! But now I do the same thing. Well, now I switch to V2 and V4. Also, make sure you label the vertices in the, in the in order like the way I've done. So now do the same thing, right? Go through V4 and like um, you know, I think oh, you guys already get this. Okay. Yeah. Get 
Okay, so yeah, just like it just can't happen now, right? We simply can't, um, we simply, if I follow this same, if I follow this same algorithm of taking a sort of depth first, or it doesn't even necessarily need to be depth first, just go all the way out in every, as much as far as you can, in every um, uh, uh, purple and blue alternating walk through this graph, I cannot possibly ever hit V2, right? Because this closed walk cannot intersect this closed walk, except at a vertex. Because, well, let's be a little bit, let's be totally clear, right? It's, since, it's really, since the graph is planar, that means that the edges never cross except at a vertex. And as all of these vertices were colored red and green, and these vertices are colored blue and purple, like I can't cross, I can't cross into this region through a vertex, and I can't cross uh, at a non-edge crossing. So therefore, I must what I have available to me, um, like a, a a swapping of basically like make this blue. Anyone have anything to add, John? Okay, I feel like there's like a slightly nicer way to do this. Wait, hold on. Um, I. Uh, I'm having a flashback to someone also saying that there's a more elegant way. Let me just like give me like one more minute to just wrap this up. Um, so this is this was blue. So now what I've done is do the swap thing again, uh, and now I have freed up uh, V to be colored purple, and thus I have five colored. Uh, I have five colored uh, G uh, based on the five coloring that already existed by inductive hypothesis in G prime. Mr. Rose, I figured out how to extend this to the graphs. Okay, wait, good, excellent, <laughs> excellent. thank you. Um, does anyone have any questions about what I've done? Well, like, yes. How, how can you prove that like, there's no, you can't, like what if V2 were outside of the loop? You can't. You can't. You can't. So well, that's, why, that's why I mentioned kind of like mumbling under my breath, that it is relevant that I chose to, like you have to label the vertices in order clockwise around, right? Like I, I, V2 couldn't be here, otherwise I would have would have called it V3. Let me clarify that. Like start with V1, V2, V3, V4, V5. So then any, this is now like some weird geometry. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let them talk in a second. Yeah, it wasn't arbitrary that I that I chose V1 and V3. I I. Well, it kind of was, but I needed these two vertices to be one off from each other, right? And any, any, this is just like now a fact of geometry, right? That any uh, loop that goes through V1 and V3 like contains V2 in the interior of that loop. It's not true. It's not true. Yeah. Uh, you mean like go around? Okay, yeah. so wait, I think what Daniel's doing, Dilhan just, Daniel was waiting patiently, but Dilhan just blurted it out. Of course it is possible that I could have gone around the other way. In which case it would have been V4 that that was trapped inside the loop. I mean, I'm pretty sure. Is that what you were going to say? Yeah. Yeah, that's important. That, yes, any closed, because it just, it's like now, this is just like now geometry theorem again, right? That just, you're just in the plane, the graph is planar. Any, any closed loop that connects V1 and V3 has to either trap V2 in the interior of that loop, 